Well, I agree with you, and that's a really nice segue into your time as the XFL commissioner. There is a void and an alternative to college football. You have also been a senior executive at the NCAA. I would love to hear your perspective on what role an NFL Europe could play versus what the XFL could play as a spring league, because I agree with you. There's a gap in training. There's a gap in pathway. There's really only one pathway, which is college athletics. And, you know, there's a three-year minimum sort of term of service, right, to be eligible for the draft. I don't know, if you had a magic wand, knowing everything you know from the XFL and the NCAA and the NFL league office, what would you do? What do you think the right solution is? Well, I do think that you know the path, the, the traditional NCAA pathway for young men, you know, coming out of high school, right, who want to play professional football, uh, is not for everybody, right? It it does, you know, it, the educational component is great, and, and I'm you know I'm all about that. Is <laughs> you and I you know talked about earlier, but it really is not you know perfect, right, for for everybody. So. Uh, having some sort of an alternative. And if you look at the other sports, obviously, you know, that alternative pathway exists, whether it's the, the G League and the NBA or some of the foreign leagues that you can go to, Europe, Australia, et cetera, whether, you know, it's baseball and the system that baseball has, you know, with the minor leagues uh, and then the independent leagues and even being you know, playing wooden bat leagues in the summertime while you're in school. So, uh, you know, all of our you know, soccer has got just a, you know, sort of a wide open, if you will, uh, you know, pathway for, you know, for young people. I mean, there are great American players right now playing over in the Bundesliga in Germany, Giovanni Reina, um, you know, who, you know, never considered college soccer and, you know, from age 16 or maybe probably even younger than that, you know, was being funneled into a certain system because people realized he had the, the talent and the mental wherewithal to, you know, play at the highest level. So I, I do think there is a space you know, in the in the marketplace for an alternative, that alternative could be aligned with the NFL, or it could be you know not aligned with with the NFL. I, I think there is a possibility for a spring league that that's well managed, and we were I think with the XFL, uh, you know, going down a pretty good path in terms of developing you know, sponsorships and spectators and, 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 and TV viewers, right. Until the pandemic hit and sort of wiped, you know, wiped us out. But I do think that because football is so darn popular, people just love watching it, uh, that they will sit down and watch a guy like PJ Walker, uh, you know, who's now the backup with the, the Panthers, watch PJ Walker quarterback, a team coached by June Jones, who's known for his offensive sort of creativity and and they'll watch those games and uh, they're affordable they we tried to sort of shrink as you know you know shrink down the game a little bit pick up the tempo with a fast-paced sort of approach and we had our games down you know well below you know three hours but still getting the kind of scoring we wanted so i think there is a market you know the challenge is whoever does that needs very deep pockets right because you've got to sort of withstand two or three years of losing a bunch of money before you even get to that point where you've stabilized and and have a, a system. As I said a lot going through the XFL, the graveyard is full of tombstones from failed spring leagues. And you can add at least, uh, you know, the XFL version 2.0, you know, to the version 1.0 that, that failed. Uh, but at some point, somebody will, will, will get it right and will have the, the staying power. And, you know, again, that could be aligned with the National Football League, uh, but it, it also could be, uh, you know, not aligned with the NFL. So there's, you know, it's a big, hairy topic. It's fascinating. But I, I, I firmly believe there's an opportunity because it's football, and that's what Americans love to watch. I, I wouldn't say that if it were any other sport. Right. But it's football and Americans love to watch football. And, you know, there's a there's a big group of very talented players that just aren't quite good enough to make it to the NFL that are just, you know, they might play a year, might play two years, bounce in and out. Uh, the kids that we had, you know, the young men playing in our league, you know, whether it's you know, PJ Walker as an example, uh, Cam Phillips. And these, these were these were solid players, many of whom, you know, are, are now on NFL rosters earning, a, you know, a nice livelihood. So. Uh, it, 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 it's doable. Uh, we, we just face, you know, sort of the, the whammy of, the, of, of COVID, the double whammy of COVID and, and, and you know, and launching right in the middle of, of COVID that just made everything very challenging. Yeah, it's a real shame. I'm, I hope, you know, we'll always be grateful that you trusted us and hired, you know, navigate for the launch of the league and all that. And we were cautiously optimistic and, and I was flipped as soon as I saw those ratings and the success and the TV product. It was, I thought it was truly going to succeed. Uh, you remove a pandemic, and I know it means losing money, a lot of money in the early years, yep. and pretty much losing money for a long time, till at least the TV deals catch up. 
but I, I, I thought it was disappointing for a bunch of reasons. There's, um, we spent the last three years working with the G League, and they're moving toward, you know, a team for every NBA team close to the facility. So it's a quick transfer to the NBA, uh, eventually commercializing the business, you know, so that it, it can stand financially on its own two feet, which will allow them to pay those players closer to market, which will allow them to keep a lot of that talent from the European leagues right here domestically, given the likelihood you can right. end up on an NBA roster. And I, I wish there could be that same pathway as you're describing, because maybe the academics aren't for everybody or are there enough with hundreds of football playing universities are there not enough kids or young people to your point that would want to carry forward their career for a few years short of NFL compensation and I think the answer is an easy yes so I just I really do hope it works out for him the the second time as we look back on, on the five weeks of play and the feedback we got from, you know, our broadcast partners, Fox and ESPN and others, uh, I think the tweaks that we made, the 25 second clock, the double forward pass rule, the different kickoff, right? I think all of those were tweaks that were made with a, a very solid underlying rationale. And if you sat with a group of football fans, which we did, we had dozens of focus groups. If you sat with those fans, they would say, oh, that makes some sense. Now I understand why you're doing the kickoff differently, right? Because the kickoffs become sort of a wasted play in the NFL. The ball just, you know, whatever, 95% of the time kicked out of the end zone. I'm seeing runbacks now. And, and you know, we had two kicks taken back for touchdowns in the you know, relatively short time we played. So I'm not sure that there's anything we would do uh, differently. I loved our tech you know, with uh, the, the broadcast, the, with the broadcaster uh, being able to talk directly to the head coach, with the TV viewer being able to listen to what the head coach is calling. That's all sort of getting inside of the huddle. And that's what people want to do. I couldn't tell you how many times as a quarterback, people would say to me, hey, what do you all say in the huddle? Can you call a play like it sounds? And do people, is it bad language in the huddle? Of course there is. You know, are there any jokes in the huddle? Absolutely. You know, do, do receivers say to the quarterback, Oliver, hey, throw me the damn ball, will you? Absolutely. Right. I mean, all the, you know, but people want to know what's being said. So having access to that, I think was, was great, you know, miking up our referees uh, so that, you know, the fan could listen in on the referee discussion after a play was thrown, if there was a review, uh, putting the, you know, the sort of sky box referee in place in stadium to overturn a call right within, I think we said 30 seconds, you know? Uh, so doing all those things, I think ended up helping the league. I'm not sure that I would change any of that. I'd also you know, be hesitant to say, that they all work perfectly because we didn't have that big of a sample size.